Hello, Oscillator Sync here. One of the things that really appeals to me about Modular is the intellectual challenge of working out how to create a patch. The creative problem solving as you work out how to connect the different sound sources and modulation sources to bring them together into one a glorious, in this case, droning whole. But I do find that for myself personally, I do have a tendency to um, find myself approaching it purely from the intellectual side of things and then ending up feeling a little bit disconnected from a patch when it comes to the actual performance. So recently I was looking for ways to bring in more hands-on control beyond just knobs and sliders to give me a more connected feel to my patches. So to that end I was very happy when I was browsing Etsy one evening and I came across this here, the Hertzlish MMI Man Machine Interface. Which is a way for me to bring very, very hands-on control to my patches. In fact, it allows me to literally become part of my patches. And I've been really enjoying exploring this module. And I wanted to just share it with you because you might enjoy it as well. Uh, to be clear, this isn't a sponsored video. Uh, I bought this module myself. Uh, Herzlich have no idea that I'm making this video. Uh, I just like to share cool things, and seeing as they are a, a smaller maker, I think just a one person operation, I do like to try and shine a light on smaller makers. So, in this video we're going to talk about what this is, how it works, and uh, try out a few different patches to see how we might use it to add more hands-on control to patches. But now I have to unpatch all of this, so uh, I'll be back in just a moment. So let's start with the uh, very basics. This is a patch cable. You may have seen one before in a modular system. A patch cable has a wire in it and that wire is very good at conducting electricity. At the moment, the electricity that's been put into this wire is the uh, oscillator signal from the 2HP VCO here. And if I plug this in to my mixer, we can hear that electricity being conducted and we're hearing it as a sound, of course. Now, uh, a patch cable is very good at conducting electricity, but other things conduct electricity as well. So for example, if I plug in this unconnected patch cable into the mixer here, and I touch the end of each of these patch cables with my thumbs, you can hear the signal as well. Now, it's quieter because I am not as good at conducting electricity as the wires are, but you can just use yourself as a patch cable between two patch cables. And it's, you know, it's one way to perform sounds in uh, modular, I suppose. But it's probably not the most um, elegant approach to actually uh, creating this connection through your body, which is where the MMI comes in. So on the MMI here, you have three patch connections and these three zigzag zones, uh, these patterns that you can see here. Now each of these patch connections correspond to one of these zones. So if I plug my uh, mixer's input to that top one there and I patch the oscillator to the middle one there, now we have a way for me to connect using my body between those two zones, essentially completing the patch. Now because we have this zigzag pattern, I can put more or less of my skin against that zigzag pattern, and that's going to make me a 
better or worse conductor of electricity and allow me to get performative control over that patch connection through my body which is very nice now we have that uh, third zone at the bottom there so we could hey we could patch that into the other side of the mixer and now in the middle we have our connection we have the left and right outputs now on either side so we have a finger controlled panner if you like you can see here that we also have these sort of spiral patterns here and these spiral patterns are made up of the coils on either side of them so this spiral pattern uh, contains the top and middle and this spiral pattern here contains uh, the bottom and middle which allows us to do one fingered connections between each of the patch cables And that's basically it with the MMI. These are not inputs or outputs, they are bi-directional. Now, I would probably suggest that you don't want to accidentally connect an output to an output. It's probably fine in most cases. So the way I've been using this is with a single, in, uh, single input, usually in the middle, and then two different destinations on the other side. Uh, but your mileage may vary. Um, so, but uh, uh, move with caution. Obviously, you are rooting electricity through your body, uh, but you you can't feel it. The current is is uh, low enough that you can't really feel it. I guess if you're particularly sensitive to these things, you might uh, feel it. You also probably want to moisturise your hands. Uh, I overwash my hands, and I wasn't getting a good connection because my skin was so dry. But since I've started moisturising, uh, I'm getting a better connection. So let's look at some other ways that we can patch this up to give ourselves nice performance controls in uh, this system. Now I am a massive cliche, which is why I have rings, or at least a rings clone, in my rack. Of course I do. How can I not? So um, here what I have done is I have uh, patched the top uh, output, or patch point rather, on the MMI into the input of rings. Our rings is going out into the mixer. What's going into this middle input is some filtered noise. So I have noise uh, here on kinks going into the ADAC dual filter, and then it's coming into here. And uh, so what we can use the MMI here for is just a way to connect the output of the noise to rings and allow us to perform rings and it really does feel like you have some very nice fine control over it it's very satisfying lovely stuff so yeah just routing signals audio signals around using DMMI as a kind of touchable VCA or attenuator very pleasant very pleasant indeed so here we've got a basic uh, monosynth patch going on here. It's the square output from the uh, VCO 2HP VCO here. It's going into the Hamster Electronics dual VCF, which is kind of a MS-20 style filter. Uh, and uh, that's going out into the output. In terms of sequencing, we've got PAMs uh, pinging away on an envelope from um, stages. That's going into the adder here up at the top here. 
What I've got um, patched into the MMI, in the middle, I've just got a 8 volts output from stages, so just a static um, voltage. On the top uh, jack here, I've got that going in to be added into my uh, my envelope here, essentially giving me like a, a, a way to open up the filter further. So if I Essentially, this is going to increase the envelope decay. as well. Let's have a higher note. Uh, this works best if you can set the voltage fairly um, uh, precisely because you don't want loads and loads of voltage in there. Um, I find that this works better if you give it a decent voltage coming in and then attenuate it uh, as you need. So on uh, pizza I'm just attenuating it using the control knob here, but um, in other patches I've also attenuated it using just a standard attenuator uh, after the connection. That seems to work better. But it's very human and expressive how you can do those slurs. And you can be fairly precise with dialing in a note. Now, another way that we can approach this is rather than making use of a static voltage, we could take a LFO instead. So uh, I've got an LFO running here on stages. I'll run that into the middle instead. And uh, now we've kind of got a mod wheel control instead. And again, it's quite a nice expression. 
progressive way of bringing in that vibrato and kind of really feel it out in a way that I don't think you can really do with a knob. basic way to approach it but I can honestly see this being how I have it set up a lot of the time because it's just really nice <laughs> it's really nice to play The MMI is an elegant and aesthetically pleasing implementation of this idea of rooting current through your skin as a means to musical expression, but it's an idea that has been around for a while. This practice of body patching has been a mainstay of the circuit bending world, but on the slightly more conventional end of music technology, you can find it on devices like the Make Noise Strager, across a bunch of the Soma Labs instruments, in particular the arcane and fascinating Enna. By the way, if you haven't checked this thing out and the more experimental side of electronic music is your thing, you really must watch some videos. There's kind of nothing else uh, like it out there. I should also highlight that Herslich also build other devices of this kind, and I've just got to flash this thing up on the screen for a moment, the MMI Maxima, which takes the same concept into an expanded desktop form factor and, well, just look at this thing. The most commonly adopted example though has got to be the Artoria Microfix keyboard, an incredibly expressive playing surface due to its design. What I've learned about myself in making this video is that I apparently lust after any instrument with this type of playing surface because I've just listed a bunch of stuff that's at the top of my gear wish list. Here we have a relentless kick drum. But that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm more interested in is this output of PAMS, which is firing out uh, triplet triggers, and that's going into the middle jack of the MMI. The top and bottom jacks are connected to the uh, trigger input on Beehive and the sync input on Pizza, which is set up to fire off its internal envelope. And what that allows me to do is connect those trigger signals to those uh, trigger inputs and bring in two different hi-hat parts by joining the relevant areas. Which is a really, really fun way of performing these sort of incidental parts that you don't want just latching and going the entire time. And because we are rooting around uh, triggers rather than audio, it's not having the same effect of sort of fading in and not quite getting the full um, volume of the signal as we were getting when we were uh, moving audio around. Now obviously sometimes you want that uh, sort of dynamic performative expressiveness, but for this kind of patch where you just kind of want it on or off, This is a really nice way of working, and you can hear that sort of on the edge of the conductive, you kind of do that sort of random skipping of trigger inputs as well. And it's a really cool way of finding these extra rhythms in there, which I kind of you're kind of just grooving to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, really fun. Uh, so don't just uh, move uh, the audio around using this, uh, when you can also move around the thing that is triggering the audio to happen to give you a kind of different approach. So this is a real nest of cables, but the good news is you don't really need to worry about most of it. There's a drum patch happening in here, uh, and it's all getting run into dark matter, which is adding the grit. 
the important thing that you need to know is that the output of uh, dark matter is being molted both to the output but also into a high pass filter here which is then just being slightly attenuated using a uh, keto and it's that high pass attenuated drum mix that's sat in the middle zone of MMI here. The top and bottom jacks here are connected into uh, MFX which is running a reverb algorithm and disting which is running a delay. So what we've got set up here essentially is a uh, classic kind of dub send setup here where we can uh, momentarily uh, send the signal into the reverb and delay for blasts of a reverb and delay. And it's really good fun. So basically he was using it to um, set up two aux sends, if you like, within the patch. It's kind of a really performable reverb and delay. Now we can sort of use it to fade in the send as well, of course, rather than just do it momentary blasts like that. Works better with the reverb, I think, than the delay. I don't know. Delay is nice as well. Yeah, uh, essentially using it as part of the signal routing within the patch. Nailed it. I don't really do reviews as such on the channel, but in a video where I am glowing with praise, I will mention a few things because I don't want anyone who rushes out to buy one of these modules to feel misled. First, if you have dry skin, you will need to moisturize. I overwash my hands and the performance of the MMI was initially disappointing, but I found that even breathing on my fingers to get a little bit more moisture on them helped loads. And once I spent a day moisturizing every few hours, uh, it performed wonderfully. Next, the module flexes a bit. I don't actually think this is a problem per se. It doesn't feel like it's suddenly going to snap and it does provide some positive tactile feedback in use, but I would probably feel a little more confident if the circuit board was a little thicker or braced at the back or something like that. Probably the big one is that with hot audio rate signals, there is leakage to adjacent zones. You may have heard it on one or two of the demos. I suspect this is because of the spiral areas allowing a current to be induced because of the proximity of the two tracks, but I'm no electrical engineer, so that's just a guess. Just know that in that use case, you might find that you don't have perfect isolation between zones. The isolation between the top and bottom zones seems much better though. I think this module is a perfect candidate for a 1U version because it allows you to mount it completely out of the way of most of your patch. And I also think that the horizontal arrangement leads to a more natural hand position when you're playing it. You might see in some of the sections of this video that I've used a converter that I got from Thunk to mount it up top of my pallet case, but a dedicated 1U module would be very welcome as the layout and size could be optimised. A smaller version with just two zones could be really neat as well, for example. And while I'm designing fantasy modules, I think an active version with a 5 volts normal to the middle zone as a default routing would actually be really, really useful, as that's the use case certainly for me that I found uh, that I was using most, and it does save you the hassle of locating a 5 uh, volt offset somewhere else in your rack. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and that I was able to shine a light on a neat little module that you could potentially try out. If you did enjoy the video, then uh, as always, a, a like and a subscribe is massively appreciated. It does help out on the channel. Uh, and other than that, uh, I will see you next time. Take care.